Well, everybody, you asked, you spoke, I listened, and we are gonna make it happen. I asked you the question, what factory tour do you wanna see next? And <laughs> it, it was pretty clear, you wanted to see Rockwood. And I had an open afternoon, I just kinda called and said, hey, is it cool if I kick in the doors and come down here and show people around? They said, absolutely. So I started flying down. I was so excited, I even managed to beat the GPS by two minutes. We'll say I was doing the speed limit. So I don't know how long I'm gonna have down here. I don't know exactly what I'm going to be able to see. I do know this will be a multi-part series. So if you like what you see here and you wanna catch the rest of it, make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't. If you have any questions about anything that you see during this video, make sure to leave a little comment or two or just to say, hey, thanks Rockwood for having us down. Thanks Halitz for getting us that footage. It is one of the best benefits I think about being a more local dealer that we get to get down here and do stuff like this that you just normally wouldn't be able to see especially right now this is recorded during a time where they just are not offering uh public tours so if you have a rockwood on order if you are considering ordering a rockwood take a look at this because i i think that it'll be very enlightening very educational for you and enough of me talking let's get started now real quick housekeeping note for you before we get going in the background you see a bunch of things that say rockwood on the front but as we keep walking you're going to see something right there that says flagstaff and you may not have been aware of it, but Rockwood and Flagstaff are literally the exact same RV made by the same people in the same places with the same materials. They have a couple different decals and occasionally a little bit different decor. Other than that though, physically they're the exact same trailer. So everything that we get to see in these tours equally applies to both brands. We're actually gonna kick off the series with the big shiny stuff. In the past, I've always waited till the end. Let's get the big fancy shiny stuff out of the way. We are in the Rockwood Signature plant. This is where signature trailers, uh, their fifth wheels are produced. And you notice, of course, safety first. I am wearing the appropriate safety attire. I don't want anybody at Forest River Corporate having a heart attack. I was never anywhere I wasn't supposed to be. So don't worry about getting Johnny Law coming to sue me. Please, please, please don't sue me. Berkshire Hathaway. <laughs> We are going to actually start all the way back here from raw chassis and go all the way down there, stinking our way through this big facility to the final product. Now, public tours at the time of this filming in are not uh, open. I made a special request and was granted a one-time special exemption to come down here, kind of in partnership with uh, the Rockwood Flagstaff marketing team, effectively, to bring you this footage here today. So tell Rockwood Flagstaff, tell them a quick thank you for allowing us in so that we get to see all this. Now, this is a live production facility. They are not in live production. We're here after hours. They turned all the lights on so that we could get through here today, basically, and see what we're doing. Um, I, I wanted to respect the workers, first of all, by giving them uh, the distance they need to do their jobs effectively and safely without having a ignorant bystander in the way. But secondly, uh, many of the, the individuals here for personal preference and or uh, religious uh, reasons do not like uh, their face captured on camera or things like that without previous consent, which I didn't have and I didn't want to be uh, offending anybody. Now, you may or may not have noticed uh, a slight change in scenery from inside where we were. We'll get back to that in just a second. I, I wanted to talk again. I mentioned how we have a, a very high uh, Amish workforce population down here. That's very common for most RV manufacturers. And I've actually had people ask me on my channel before, while the Amish folks are inside working and it's a polar vortex outside, uh, what about their animals? Because horse-drawn carriage is the most common mode of transportation for the laborers down here. That's where this comes in. Uh, in the winter time or in scorching hot summertime, what they will actually do is this is a shed specifically for the animals over here. A little barn off in the corner where it's quiet, where they're not gonna get spooked from all the air tools and things like that. Um, they, they keep the buggies parked outside. They bring the, uh, the animals inside, the horses inside where they're, they're fed and watered regularly. And it's that kind of extra human element where Rockwood took the time to erect I mean, it's not like a major structure thing, but they took the time to invest back in their people. And when you take care of your people, they tend to take care of you. Something you may not realize, Rockwood has more 10 and 20 year uh, like uh, service plaques issued to their staff than I, I believe any other uh, brand out there, at least of which I'm aware. I know of any that we work with here uh, at Halet RV. Um, they also have multiple third generation uh, employees where uh, through the years, some little kid got a job at Rockwood. He grew up and had a son who got a job at Rockwood. He grew up and got a, uh, a job at Rockwood. They actually have grandfather, father, son, or grandson, as it were, um, family teams working 
in, in this facility right here. I think that says a lot because it's not just a job. This is a career. This is a passion. This is a pride for the people down here. That's, that's something special and it shows through in their products. So these are the raw chassis and I always try to see if I can figure this out. And I think I know which one this is and I'm wondering if you can figure it out. Look at their floor plan lineup. We've got a rear bed slide. There's a single rear ram arm back there. There's dual ram arms on the front and I see how there's another ram arm over here. So there's a, a super slide here on the driver's side. There's a bed slide in the back on the driver's side, then a smaller, not quite super slide over here on the door side. Three slide, Rockwood Signature Floor Plan or Flagstaff. Again, anything that's a Rockwood or Flagstaff, they have different model numbers sometimes, but they're the exact same trailers. Can you figure out what this is? Now you see some very basic, like these are some of the wires that will go up to the tongue of the, uh, the trailer getting kind of pre-staged over here. And what happens is you see the uh, the chain hoist system. They actually lift the, the chassis up and that is where the uh, torsion axle and suspension system gets installed. That's another very key difference between uh, Rockwood and Flagstaff units versus almost anybody else out there, especially in fifth wheels. There's, I'm not saying they're 100% exclusive with it in fifth wheels, but folks, they are pretty close, far and away the most prolific user of it. And one of the things here is that if you notice, it's not a leaf spring system. Each tire is allowed to operate with far more independence. Each tire has up to three inches of its own independent uh, vertical travel. The left and right tires on the same axle can, can be up to uh, six inches different, you know, three up, three down. So let's say you're going down the road and you, some guy kind of cuts you off and you have to kind of veer off the road a little bit and your right wheels are over on the shoulder. The right wheels will drop down. The left wheels will stay up. The RV will try to keep itself flat is what happens so that you can uh, slow down, get yourself back on the road. Or when you're going around those fancy curly Q exits, that right there will help it effectively ride like it's on rails. Now you see the tires over there. Rockwood uses exclusively Goodyear Endurance radials, 87 mile an hour rated, the only American made tire used in the RV industry today. On the Signature Series, you will see them on 15 inch wheels. And you see the little, uh, hey, little alert thing right there on the valve stem. Every single Rockwood travel trailer or fifth wheel, or again, by extension, Flagstaff. Anytime the rest of the day I say Rockwood, I also mean Flagstaff, keep that in mind. Um, they come standard with a factory tire monitor, tire pressure monitoring system and a separate handheld uh, monitor for that, which I like because that means that, you know, there's, uh, there, there's one less app that I need on my phone constantly chirping at me. And it's something that my co-pilot can help manage to help keep me, if I'm driving, focused on the road. So after the running gear is on, you see some basic plumbing, basic wiring fixtures start going into place right here. And notice too how Rockwood's very good about distributing the water tanks in the RV. Now, it is not recommended actually, uh, a lot of people don't realize this, so here's a little pro tip for you from your Uncle Josh. It is not recommended going down the road towing with full holding tanks, but if for some reason you do need to, because I understand especially in some areas where people uh, boondock more, there is more of a need to do things like that, at least on shorter distances. Always keep it as short as you can. They want to make sure that your weight and your load is as equally distributed as possible. Um, that will, you know, help for better ride, better handling. It'll help make sure that your weight distribution hitch is operating properly because you haven't significantly changed the tongue and or, uh, you know, tail weight of the RV. Try to keep everything balanced out as good as you can. Now, notice that the slide systems actually came pre-installed from the chassis manufacturer because they're actually one in the same. And where you see a like rack and pinion ram bar slide system like this, notice too how the motor's all nicely encapsulated inside the chassis and the underbelly area away from basically almost any sort of exterior weather exposure. It's just more reliable protecting your wiring, uh, keeping some gunk and junk out of the motor. Now over there, this is actually where the uh, floors are all jigged up. Every single Rockwood floor plan, they actually keep the jigs basically indefinitely, theoretically. Let's say for some reason you found like an eight-year-old Rockwood travel trailer that they don't even make anymore. If their production schedule allows, it is theoretically possible for them to potentially remake a wall or floor for you even on a discontinued floor plan. 
They don't do that a lot because basically their stuff doesn't tend to fail a lot. It's not, you know, necessarily unheard of. Sometimes, uh, you know, a, a miss by an owner could allow a leak or something to compromise something. And maybe some people want to rebuild it to factory spec. We've actually had one person do that one time, but only in the 12 years that I've been at Haylet RV. But every single floor is jigged uh, according to uh, you know the, the needs for that floor plan. Now in a signature series, they do utilize floor ducted heating in some areas. Um, one of the reasons for that is when you have the heat duct running through the flooring, first of all, you're actually heating the flooring so that your feet stay a little warmer, which is nice. Um, but the second thing is it distributes heat far more evenly through the RV. And uh, that on a bigger RV, like a Rockwood Signature, where you have far more cubic foot of space in play, that is an important factor to potentially consider. On a mini light, many of the ultras that are much smaller, it's less of an issue. You just don't got to worry about it. This is also the only area of the RV, basically, uh, that is structural that you will not see lamination used. Instead, you will actually see that they have a, uh, like, uh, let, let me get over here, a three inch tubular aluminum uh, frame that is all welded together right here. Give you just an idea of the uh, the thickness of what we're looking at. You have a 5 8 tongue and groove plywood floor decking, which is basically, that's the same recipe that you'd find in some big heavyweight fifth wheels. Rockwood got away from their laminated flooring, I think around the 2014 or 15 model year, something like that. They added a little bit of weight. It did add a little bit of cost, but it created a superior strength product. And that's a funny thing. Sometimes process A and B can be better than each other in different areas. It's a very interesting thing that kind of comes through. You may also notice a roll of batten insulation down there. The floor down here is basically the only area of the RV that you will see batten insulation used. Everything else will be a high density block foam, all encapsulated within the lamination, whether it's the slide outs, the roof, the sidewalls, everything. Now, one of the things I really would have liked to have shown you, but again, for reasons I mentioned before, I do need to be here after hours. Um, not, not to mention just it keeps the noise down so that you can, you can hear me, Jack John, unless you already hit the mute button, which is what my wife tries to do to me all the time. I don't blame her. Obviously, you can see like the flooring material goes down. But what I want to show you, and I, and I got to do some, some hand puppets here and, and ask you to work with me on this. That's the floor twist and shouter right there. Probably not the technical term, but what it does is it latches onto this whole thing and it doesn't flip it upside down. What it'll actually do is stand the trailer on its side, the chassis and stuff vertically. And, and I've never seen another factory that does that. And, and I asked, why, why, why do they do that? And the answer is so that when they're finishing things up in the underbelly, whether it's finishing the wiring, the plumbing, putting everything in place, the workers aren't bending over, they're not reaching, they're not stretching, they're not dropping loose nuts and bolts inside of this thing that then just get encapsulated by the underbelly and then flipped over. I have said the word encapsulated far too much today. Do not turn this into an Uncle Josh drinking game every time he says encapsulated, take a shot. By the, by, by the time we're done with this video, you might end up sick. I don't recommend doing that. Anyway, my point is that everything is right at eye level, chest level, belly level maybe, and they can finish doing their work in a more controlled manner and it, it gives them a better finished product effectively. Now, once that's done, uh, you know, the, the, the 12 volt tank heaters get put in place because those are standard on all Rockwood Signature trailers. They actually have been standard on signatures for a long, long time. They are now standard also on ultralights and minis. You start to see something interesting and it throws a lot of people off. If you've seen my other factory tours, then you've seen this before, but if you never have, it seems super, super backwards that a lot of the interior wall partitions start getting placed first before the walls go up. And the, the biggest reason why is it's easier to just get this stuff in place. Some of it can have some, uh, you know, they can start to secure it to the floor at least. These radius pieces that we're looking at right here, those are probably things that go in a front closet. So they do need to wait till the walls go up to finish those. But it's almost completely backwards from what you would expect. Now. Anywhere that Rockwood does something structural, and this is a key point, you'll see this kind of repeated very consistently, um, but you, you gotta remember what we're looking at here. Anywhere that they do something structural, it will be an aluminum structure. Anywhere that is just a partition, they will still utilize a wooden skeleton. So like you will see that a bed base, for instance, is uh, an aluminum structure. If it's a dinette, 
It's an aluminum structure. Um, additional wall points where there's heavy flex and or strength required, they will use an aluminum structure. They basically just stick build some interior wall partitions to help better define where, you know, different rooms and things are located. Now you saw that just a couple steps down the line, the walls start going on. Um, if you're even minorly familiar with this brand, what they do is they have a, uh, uh, a full vacuum laminated uh, wall system and roof structure, actually. They're one of the few that have a machine that has been calibrated to be able to laminate on at least a, a, a slight curve. Most lamination is just flat. Rockwood cracked the coat on that. They were one of the first ones to start doing vaulted uh, laminated roofing and everyone else is like, that can't work. And, and hey, look at that, it still does. Actually, vaulted structures, a radius structure is has more integrity than a non-radius structure. And this is another little hidden secret tidbit I talk about in my videos, but you don't usually get to see. They actually do have a one-inch laminated front wall that then has a nose cap affixed over it. There is also a radiant barrier layer that we'll see go down that for uh, some additional protection and consistency. And there will be a radiant barrier running all the way through the floor of this as well. Now... When the walls start going up, more fixtures at each station start getting uh, locked into place. But notice, too, the respect that uh, the folks have at every single station for the fact that this will be someone else's property at some point. This might be someone's home, potentially. So they make sure anywhere that they got to set stuff down, uh, they're always putting something down under them. So they're not just like dropping air tools or you know their their wire cutters or something like that and gouging your floor. And the fit, finish, and cleanliness of a Rockwood on arrival at a dealership, as a person who carries so many different brands, I will put them head to head with anybody absolutely doing the Pepsi challenge. Now from here, uh, this is the, the, the scaffolding basically, is power up down scaffolding that helps the workers get to the roof work. Very similar to the, the, uh, the, the floor flipperator. <laughs> I don't know if that's, what if that was actually the technical term? How wild would that be? <laughs> I don't think it is. But when there's these big power hoists up top that uh, hoist the roof into place. And this roof is a one piece laminated structure, very similar to a lot of high end diesel pushers. They have a big one piece, fully walkable, thick laminated roof. And I want to run you through a little mental exercise right here. Um, people ask, like, what are the R values? What are the insulation? There's way too many false R values out there reported in the RV industry today. You, you can't take stuff like that serious. But I have a real world parallel for you here that is just undeniable. Okay, so whether you're a coffee drinker or you've brought a cup of coffee to somebody at some point in your lifetime, those thin, flimsy little styrofoam cups, you can pour the scaldingest hot coffee in those things. And you barely even notice there's something warm in your hand, right? Now, imagine there's like a three and a half inch coffee cup above your head. You've got one and a half inch coffee cup walls behind you. You've got a three inch thick floor. Our values are falsely stated all over the place in the RV industry. And it absolutely drives me bonkers. One of the things I really do like about Rockwood is that they don't engage in that nonsense space foil R equivalent uh, story. It sounds very good, but it's got an R38 equivalent. You're telling me if you fold that in half, it's an R76? Because it's not. It, you know, space capsules for re-entry with special space age ceramics were only like an R50. You're telling me these things have an atmospheric re-entry package? No, no, they obviously don't. But Rockwoods are very good, very consistent. A amazing extended season RVs. And that type of construction is true, whether it's the signatures, the ultralights, the, the mini lights, even down through the Geo Pros. They're all very consistent in the builds, the thicknesses, the methods, so that you get a very consistent product and a very comfortable experience every time you're out there. Okay, now for lawyer purposes, <laughs> I can't get out there on the scaffolding, I asked. Even after hours, they said, no, I'm sorry, you're just, you're not a person who's supposed to be out there, you're not qualified. Um, and I respect that, I get that. I'm not trying to cause anybody problems. I wanted to get you up here a little bit closer. A couple things, with a laminated roof structure, one of the main differences is you don't have a bunch of staples and screws potentially working their way loose and poking their way up through your roof membrane because that's obviously a severe problem. 
Something else that you're not seeing since we are not in active working conditions right now is that unlike some manufacturers, there, there's a lot of brands out there where anywhere there's a puncture in the roof, what I mean by that is where there's like the air conditioner or, or, or some vents or something like that, that is an area where they had to cut the roof membrane to allow for air or whatever to pass through. Any, a, a lot of manufacturers will only glue around those areas and they let the roof membrane basically free float like a bed sheet and then they just tuck it in on the sides, again, like a bed sheet. Rockwood does go an extra step here that a lot of people are not aware of. They actually have rollers. They hand roll the glue all the way down the roof structures here before they put the roof membrane on. That gives them complete even coverage, and it takes a little more time and effort than um, spraying the adhesive onto the roof, but it also means they don't accidentally spray adhesive down the sidewalls of the trailer. Um, after that, they don't just roll it in place. They put the roof membrane down, and they literally have a squeegee team come out here and squeegee the air bubbles out from the center of the roof out uh, the side so that you get a clean, even roof membrane attachment with no air bubbles, no pockets. It's going to look great. Even if, and they've been doing this. This isn't new. This is the way Rockwood does and always has done things. And when you see the used Rockwoods that come in at Halet RV that I get up on the roof on, notice how they always look good. It's because they go the extra mile in a place that most people don't know about. They do it because it's the right way to build something. And they barely ever talk about this. Rockwood builds one of the best products and they do so little to tell you about it, but they're so good that they still have one of the, the most loyal, I think, audiences out there in the industry, in an industry that has very little uh, buyer loyalty. Once you own a Rockwood, chances are you almost never swap to anything else. Now, when that roof is getting finished up, the nose cap also goes in place as well. And I swear, like everything else they do here, they have a very specialized piece of equipment to do that. I looked up here and I'm like, what is that crazy octopus thing? And that's kind of sort of what it is. It basically suction cups onto the nose cap at four points so that you have, you know, even grab points every single time uh, it, it gets a hold of one of these caps, as opposed to, let's, let's say just one or two or three individual laborers, this would obviously be a lot for one person, but two or three people, picking this thing up at different rates, twisting it a little bit, potentially stressing it funny. They don't want to do that. They don't want to take the chance that you got something on your hands. They don't want ugly fingerprints all over it. They don't want to take a chance of a wedding ring scratching it or some screws in your hand or anything like that. So they have a machine that holds onto that thing, keeps it held right in place as they're putting it on the front of the RV, which by virtue of the fact that you don't have a person trying to lift and grunt this thing the whole time, I think actually allows them to do a little bit better job uh, basically attaching it to the front of the camper. Okay, so we're in the same model, but notice there's been a color change. That's another uh, interesting thing with the Rockwood and Flagstaff group. They're one of the very few that still gives you multiple, like, interior, exterior, different color options, whether it's fabrics, wood tones, or the actual skin and the nose cap. And once the graphics go on, when I get a chance to show you a good A-B comparison side by side, I'll do that. But you notice, too, very quickly, the slide outs start coming into place. Cool thing with Rockwood, and this is true of many manufacturers, but their slide outs are basically built exactly the same. They figured, hey, we're building a heck of an RV. Why do we need to change the process just because it's now a slide out? So this is uh, the same kind of laminated wall structure, roof structure. The floor structures are basically the same. You notice uh, a lot of similar processes in that uh, like interior cabinetry is actually installed before the slide out is installed so that it's just one less thing that needs to happen on the production line. Each worker has a small number of tasks that they repeat ad nauseum. When they do that, they learn their jobs very, very well, and there's less quality control as a result because they could start to basically do this stuff in their sleep. Now, not in a scaffolding, but uh, on like a, a mezzanine where some offices are located, I was able to get up here to get a good shot at the roof line. You see things like the, uh, the quieter Coleman Mach AC units, the uh, Max Air vent fan covers anywhere you get a ceiling vent fan and a Rockwood travel trailer or fifth wheel, you get that bigger vent fan cover, standard from the factory. You could add those easily aftermarket. You could have a dealership like Halet RV apply them for you on any RV, but the factory didn't put them there, so the factory doesn't warrant them. But with Rockwood, you don't have to worry about that. Once again, it all goes to accountability, and you'll see more of that. Uh, there's another good instance of that that we'll talk about in the mini light plant in part two of this. You see the roof solar prep plug right there. Rockwood does have optional roof solar packages and inverter packages that you can utilize. 
But look at the top of that nose cap right there. That is in, that's before they apply the sealant. It's basically just screwed down to the roof decking. But notice how the nose cap does wrap over the roof line. So you're not putting uh, the roof to nose transition stream called a termination strip in an area of higher stress. They're actually backing it off a little bit. Very similar to say like motorized RVs. And that is what it looks like after the sealant comes into play. I'm going to zoom you out just a little bit. If you're motion sensitive, maybe close your eyes. Three, two, one, go. There we are. And uh, notice too, this is where you'll start to see slide awnings. And then very quickly after the main patio awnings start to come on uh, the RV. Most of the work at this stage though, other than the windows, will be uh, in a bunch of interior stops. And you'll start to see, obviously we've got some graphics going on. I, I just, I don't know how they do that. That is all done by hand. The consistency, knowing where to put those things like that, I, I just, I don't have the ability. Every time I go to a factory, that is one of the things that I'm actually always in awe of. Whoever puts those stickers on, every factory has an absolute genius, like skilled tradesperson doing it. And from here, they're basically done on the outside. You see, there's still a little bit of graphical decal work to go, but once the windows come into place, you see the steps are installed. Um, the, the, the holding tanks, or rather the propane tanks, the battery box, all those things get put in place on here. The exterior is effectively finished, and there are just some quality control checkers going down the line. And that's one other thing I want to mention on this factory tour, is that they have active quality control going all the way down the production line. They're doing things like doing gas drop pressure tests on the production line as it's going so that if there is an issue they can identify when it happened where it happened what station it was at far far sooner another very interesting thing uh in the rockwood production facility that has actually been since adopted by a lot of the members of the forest river families up there those are the warranty administrator offices and it sounds weird that i would point that out but listen to this would you believe that in the rv industry this is incredibly uncommon in Almost every single instance of a, a, a factory production facility, the warranty administrators, the people who call, who approve things that we call, or maybe the, the people that you call if, if there's some sort of concern, they're almost never located in an actual production facility. Many of them doing those jobs have never been inside of their own production facilities. They, they learn the process and they're, they can be very skilled, they can be effective, but I think it says a lot that Rockwood puts their actual warranty people in the plant where these RVs are produced because it gives them hands-on, eyes-on, personal level understanding and experience. Another thing that they have is a process that I think is very interesting. If uh, they receive the same call, like what is considered a big red flag item, like three times in one week, their job is to get up out of their seat, walk down that staircase and come down here to the production line to find the appropriate line leader for that section and say, here's what's going on. Uh, this has been happening. It got down the production line without us realizing it until it got live and in the world. We need to find what it is right now. We need to stop it right now. Log the VIN number where we located this and where we corrected it so that we know which other ones might be affected. And as simple as that sounds, that is stuff that almost no other RV manufacturer does. And it's actually interesting. Um, Rockwood created their own processes here for their quality control. And there's actually random Forest River audits done where a third party, totally independent company, not at all owned by Forest River, uh, comes in and grabs a couple trailers every week from uh, basically all the Forest River production plants. And I think all but one year that I've known about, Rockwood has been the, the, the quality award winner from that company under the Forest River banner because of processes like these. Since then, a few other brands like Cherokee has introduced something similar, um, but it was all basically modeled. Rockwood is the one, they've been around longer. They are literally the original ultralight brand, by the way. Rockwood's the very first ultralight RV in the marketplace. They existed before Forest River. Uh, when, when Cobra converted over into Forest River, Rockwood was their first acquisition. Rockwood is ancient in terms of the active RV world, they continue to do it right because they have more experience and they've just seen, they're, they're like farmers, they know a thing or two, they've seen a thing or two. Well, Rockwood, they know a thing or two, they've seen, seen a thing or two, two. <laughs> yeah. And just to give you, like I said, a little midline update, each station, and there's like 40 stations where you look at it from the outside, you go, nothing's happening. It's all happening inside once the shell has come together. 
Uh, you'll, there'll be a station where the appliances get installed. There's uh, uh, a station where they start running wiring for things like our entertainment up front in this one. And remember we were playing that game, what floor plan is this? Did you guys figure it out? This is called an 8324 Rockwood. And I apologize, I don't know the Flagstaff equivalent number. But still some respect paid like this. Along the way, I've been poking my head in these things along the way. There's always like an extra, say, microwave box or something where they're using it as a collection for debris. They're not just throwing it on the floor and then sweeping it up later. They're making sure that that stuff doesn't get like tracked under the slide outs or, you know, tucked away under the furniture. The wiring again inside the cabinetry is done very cleanly. It's, it's a bunch of very interesting things. Now, a very special note on the Signature Series travel trailers is their extra interior height. That's one of the things I really like about them as a taller person, I'm about 6'3". So first of all, most Rockwood trailers, the mini lights and the ultra lights have a six and a half foot sidewall, and then that little mini vaulted ceiling that you're looking at, because I don't use a bubble fisheye lens. I like everything to look on camera the way it looks to you. That's one of those transparency things that I like to give you at Haylet RV. But a signature series takes it up another three inches to a six foot nine sidewall, and they still maintain that ceiling vault. And that's one of the things that where they're doing again rockwood's doing both things that different manufacturers they might do a vaulted ceiling or they might do a taller sidewall rockwood says signature series we're doing both and that's what i mean when i say rockwood doing rockwood things and that's why i've started calling them the hold my beer of rv brands you want to do a vaulted ceiling you want to do taller sidewall hold my beer i'm gonna do both that's rockwood baby now remember how i said anything that is structural or load bearing rockwood will build with aluminum skeleton do you know what we're looking at right here? This is a big old pallet of Rockwood bed decks. This is the layer that goes right below the actual uh, mattress itself. And because this is weight bearing, because this is where people are going to be sitting or sleeping or laying down or whatever, they go ahead and they still fully weld that aluminum structure. And you see the, um, oh, this is a technical term, and I'm sorry if this is a little advanced for you guys, but it's the only way I know how to describe it. The knobby jobs <coughs> right here, well, those are where your uh, gas struts are located for the easy lift and lowering. So, you know, if you got a bad shoulder or something, you don't, you don't got to tear your rotator cuff just to get to your extra bedding for your guests under your bed. Now, as I was walking around here, I noticed there's like all these tubs. Uh, I was like, what? what is this? What is this? Well, what they're doing right here is they are actively water testing every single fixture every single holding tank every single line on every single trailer that they make and these are little collection tubs that they'll slide under the low point drains these are basically all being staged for tomorrow so they they put a measure of water into every single one of these they pressurize the system and then periodically through the line they will begin to drain those out when when one tank uh, or one of these little tub stations fills up they start to make sure they drain it out at the next one and so on until they can uh, go through and pull those out and get those replaced and replenished. But again, every single RV with 100% uh, completion rate is LP uh, pressure tested, is water pressure tested, make sure that every single thing is watertight. And then in the uh, winter seasons, they'll make sure that they get all those lines forced air blown out so that it doesn't show up to the dealership in the Midwest like, like Haylet RV with a bunch of ice cubes in the water lines causing issues. Because, man, it only takes one ice cube to cause havoc. And obviously, they're on top of it here. I've never seen it done exactly this way. This is interesting. I learned something today. Now, so far, it's looked a little bit bare bones inside. You can see the skeleton work of the, of the cabinetry in place. You haven't seen any furniture yet. Rockwood intentionally puts all that stuff in last. Because, you know, this is the softest surface in the RV. They don't want a worker walking through with a tool hanging off their belt or dropping some nuts and bolts and scuffing things or jabbing a hole in your uh, pleather surface on your seating or whatever here. Another thing that I really like about this is there's often a question of, well, what if I want to replace my furniture down the line? Can I get it out the door? Yeah, you absolutely can because they had to get it in the door in the first place. That's one of the other really cool things about Rockwood using a fifth wheel size larger door, even on a travel trailer. Now we're not at a total 100% completion yet, but you can obviously see we're getting pretty darn close. Put in a TV, at this point, you know, cabinet doors and some furniture, uh, a couple valances, 
and man does it really take shape very very quickly now obviously we have also changed floor plans this is one of the new 8337 rear living rockwoods again i apologize i as a rockwood dealer i'm not intimately familiar with the um sister flagstaff model but you can find the exact same looking thing uh in a flagstaff as well the uh other thing i wanted to point out here Something Rockwood started doing in the 2021 generation, and I sure hope they continue, because I find personally a lot of value in it, are these little posters. And you'll find those located right on the door of every new Rockwood that they produce. They have different ones for Mini Light, Signature, Ultra, etc. And it goes through so many things. And, and these are not just good sales points. This is not just good information giving you like a, a, a very basic outline of what I've done here for you today talking about the tire pressure monitoring system and, and the max airs and all that kind of stuff. But if nothing else, there's so many people. Are you a pet owner? Do you have dogs that you camp with? Suddenly now, in a sense, we've almost got like a little built-in doggy shield. I don't think I've ever talked about that. That is uh, something that one of the folks here as I was walking through actually pointed out, said, hey, actually, no, I, I left mine on there so that, you know, when my dog was scratching the door to get out, it wasn't, it wasn't ripping up my screen door. I just kind of thought about that. I'm like, that is brilliant. One other little thing here. These have been around for a while, but it's like nobody does them or talks about them anymore. That little automatically closing screenshot, it's called there. It's another one of those little plus one features. It's probably not like, this is not the reason you're going to buy a Rockwood RV versus something else. But this is a quality of life factor for the actual end owner. Rockwood puts that on there knowing it's going to cost a couple bucks, knowing that most people are never going to uh, care two cents about it until you actually go camping. And sometimes it's nice that you can just go like that, let the screen door close without going, ho wham! You know, it doesn't make a huge racket and disturb everybody inside, but it's nice that you can just flick it and forget it. Ron Popeil should have said something like that. Actually, I think he did. Now, once we do get to the end of the production line where she's 100% complete, I think a really cool thing that Rockwood has here is a scale that every single unit goes across. Every single unit is individually weighed and tagged, and you will find that individual tag on both the tongue of the trailer as well as in the door jam of your main entry door. You might not realize it, but not every factory has that kind of extra uh, money invested into their facilities. It is actually okay by RVIA code standards for an RV manufacturer to build one copy of one model, have it weighed, and then provide estimated weights based on the options that are applied to that unit applied to a weight sticker that is then sent out the door. If you see a manufacturer who every single time they build a model, it's labeled with the exact same weight, or if it's always if the last digit in the weight is zero or five every single time, those are brands that are using estimated weights. Now, to be fair, they do have to be reasonably accurate. They can't just pick this stuff out of thin air willy-nilly. But when it comes to towing and family safety and road safety, would you rather work with somebody who estimated or somebody who actually checks individually every single time? I know what my answer would be. Leave me an answer in the comments. Let me know what you're thinking. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining us today. If you appreciate the extra in-depth and behind the scenes, under the skin look at things, leave us some comments saying, thanks Halitz, thanks Rockwood for making this happen. Thanks for, you know, letting them uh, give me the exception to come down here. Because again, at the time of this filming, public tours are not open. I do hope that opens up soon, but this is as close as we can get in the meantime. And I want to put this out to a service, not to just the people who are going to buy from Halitz RV, because I know that we have a very broad national uh, audience. I know there's a lot of people in a lot of other states that would like to work with us, but I know they, you know, we're, we're pretty far away. It's a bit of a long haul. I still want to just say thank you to our supporters and our viewers and, and still put in the extra time and effort to get this stuff out to you. If you appreciate that and if you want to catch the other segments of this series as they come out, I don't know if it's going to be another two or another three segments, make sure you hit that subscribe button and enable your notifications so you can see when they roll out. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, remember, we're ready when you're ready and we'd love the chance to work with you at our family owned and operated shop. We don't do hidden dealer fees, we only do everything else. So take care, stay safe, have fun. And until next time, everyone.